We ended our broadcast yesterday by me saying that uh, we're going to look at Job's response to Eliphaz's accusations and falsehood, actually, some things he's making up here, both about Job's heart and, way, and the way Job actually lives in, in his life, his behavior. But uh, I'm going to back up. I'm going to, uh, to do that tomorrow and look go back to chapter 22. There's some things here yet that we need to pick up on concerning Eliphaz's advice and counsel to Job and his accusations. Uh, so we, we go back to verse 12 of chapter 22, and we find that, that uh, Eliphaz at this point is actually trying to defend God. Now, Eliphaz's understanding of God is pretty simple and, uh, and actually uh, pretty, off, pretty off base in many cases, but, but he thinks he's defending God. He, he knows Job is challenging God, and Eliphaz is defending God, but he's not doing it very well. And so we have to be very careful when we're trying to speak for God that we know what God would actually say, right? I think that's very important. But go to verse, uh, verse 12, chapter 22. Is not God in the height of heavens of heaven? Look also at the distant stars and how high they are. You say, what does God know? Can he judge through the thick clouds? Well, he is saying here, look, uh, God, God knows. You're, you're saying God doesn't know. I'm saying that God does know. That's good theology, right? I mean, Eliphaz is right. God is not uh, 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 oblivious to what we do. God knows all things. God knows Job. God knows the circumstances. God knows these things. And so if Job is saying, what does God know? That's not good. And Eliphaz is pushing back on that. And his theology at that point is right. Job of being rebellious against God, and that's why God, who now Eliphaz is representing, is doing all these things to Job. In verse 17, it says this, And they said to God, Depart from us, and what can the Almighty do to them? Um, and then what he's saying here basically is Job, Job is one of those guys who is saying, I'm, I'm going to do whatever I want to, uh, and even saying to God, Get away from me, depart from me, uh, and, and that is the exact accusation that Bildad had made back in 1821, where he was accusing Job of, of, uh, of challenging God and of, of saying God doesn't know. Now, Eliphaz has a solution to this, he thinks. Uh, here, here is his solution. Uh, verse 21, he says, Yield now and be at peace with him, thereby good will come to you. Please receive instruction from his mouth and, and establish his words in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you will be restored. If you remove unrighteousness far from your tent, then apparently God is going to come through. So here's his, the his theory. Uh, his philosophy of life is that the only reason Job could be going through these things is he's in sin. Uh, so he's representing God. Notice he says here, listen to God's mouth. And apparently Eliphaz has decided he is God's mouthpiece. And so he's going to speak for God. But what he's saying here is this, if uh, the, the remedy to Job's problems is repentance, Job needs to see where he's wrong. He needs to repent even of these things that he hasn't done. And when he does, God will restore him. Now, he's got two problems here. Number one, he doesn't really know what Job needs to repent of. God knows that. And in, and in all reality, God is working on that in Job's life. There are things here that Job uh, has been blinded to. He doesn't see some issues of his life that he needs to turn from. And God is exposing those things for Job as he does in our life uh, in many ways through the scriptures, through people, uh, through, uh, through messages, through uh, suffering. And Job is being exposed to those things. They're being revealed to him. That's good. Uh, but Eliphaz doesn't know what those things are. And he's making accusations that are not true. And then his other issue is that he believes repentance brings restoration apparently every time. Now, it is true that if we repent of our sins, God will forgive us of our sins. That's a marvelous truth found in Scripture. He, he will always forgive us of our sin when we confess them, when we repent of them. The, clay, the slate is cleared with God. And there, there are many wonderful uh, benefits that come from the forgiveness of that comes with the Lord. But restoration is not always guaranteed. Because we repent of sin, because God forgives us of certain sins, does not guarantee full restoration. Uh, sometimes the consequences of our sins are never going to go away. Uh, or, or, or even if we repent, God has planned something else for us that we're not yet privy 
too. We don't know those things. And so is, is understanding of God is too simple. It, it is, he's got a black and white understanding. Uh, he has a mathematical two plus two equal four understanding of God. God does not function that way. Eliphaz does not know that. He's promising things that God does not promise. Let's, let's not do that. Let's only promise that which God promises. And God does promise with confession and repentance of sin comes forgiveness. That he could say. Restoration to the way things used to be, he couldn't promise that because God had not promised that.